What's going on guys, WhiteFox1225 here and I just got back from basic training and I was thinking about what my first video should be and I thought about a couple different things but in the end it definitely had to be player housing for ESO because I've been looking forward to this for so long and I know a lot of you guys have too. So today we're going to be talking about Homestead which is Zenimax's uh, name for player housing in ESO and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys all the details, everything we know so far and everything you have to know for the launch coming this February. When you start player housing, there's going to be a little quest tutorial where you're going to be given a room at a local inn, and that room will be yours, so even if you never buy a house again in the game, you'll always have that room to go back to, and it's going to teach you some things like how to buy a house, how to furnish one, and all of that. So it's nice that players, especially players who just start the game, will have a place to stay, even if they never have enough coins to buy another house, or they don't want to buy them with crowns, they'll at least always have that room to go back to. After that tutorial, you'll be able to buy houses wherever you want because with the one Tamriel update, you can go anywhere in the whole map. So you'll be able to buy them in whatever zone you want, but before you buy houses, you're going to have to prove yourself to the people who live there. Zenimax said you'll have to complete a specific achievement to prove your worth. I'm not quite sure what that means. It might mean a new quest you have to do, or maybe it's just an achievement that already existed within that zone that you'll have to get. Not too sure about that, but it shouldn't take too long, and once you do that, you can buy houses in that zone. When you go to buy houses, there's two options. You can buy them furnished or unfurnished. You can preview both before you buy them. I'm not too sure what that will look like, but you'll get to see the house before you actually buy it. The unfurnished version you can buy with coins or crowns, but the furnished versions of the houses you can only buy in the crown store. That really doesn't bother me, I think a lot of people are going to want to buy the unfurnished version anyway, I know I definitely will, because I think part of the fun is customizing a house on your own. But if for some reason you do want the furnished version, you're going to have to buy that with crowns in the crown store. Now even if you buy a furnished version, you're still going to be able to customize it the way you want. You can still move the furniture around and add furniture and do whatever you want, but it will come with a full set of furniture and a fully decorated house. Later down the road, they mentioned there's going to be crown store exclusive houses, like an island retreat that they teased. That's cool, I really don't have a problem with that at all. I think it's awesome if Cinemax wants to make extra money by putting some cool houses in. They also mentioned that with crowns, you're going to be able to buy furniture and decorations. I really don't have a problem with that as long as the stuff that's in the game to buy with coins is just as cool as the stuff in the crown store. And they did say that the island retreat house isn't any bigger than the houses that are already in the game. So if you don't want to spend extra crowns, you don't have to. And if you do want to buy some of those cool additions, you know, you're more than welcome to. So I really have no problem at all with Zenimax putting houses in the crown store. One thing that I thought was kind of weird is that if you want an imperial style house, you can only buy one if you have the imperial edition of the game. A lot of people don't even know what the Imperial uh, Edition is, I don't think. It was available for pre-order like three years ago when the game came out. And it's kind of weird because a lot of people who play ESO now didn't necessarily play three years ago. Personally, I do own the Imperial Edition, but a lot of people don't. And if you don't own that version, you're not going to be able to buy an Imperial style house. I think this is kind of weird again because it's an exclusive that existed a few years ago. And you can still buy the Imperial Upgrade. But it's just kind of weird to me, and I think it would have been a lot nicer if they just put the Imperial Houses in for free. It doesn't make too much sense for me, but uh, if you do really want Imperial Houses, you're going to have to buy the Imperial Upgrade, or maybe just check, you might already have the Imperial Edition, and you might not even know it. Two things I want to mention quick. First, sadly, DLC zones will not have player housing. If you wanted a house in the Gold Coast, sadly there's not going to be one there. Maybe they'll change that in the future, and hopefully they will add houses there. But maybe for bigger expansions and DLC with full zones, hopefully we'll have housing there because that's something I would really like to see. And also you can buy as many houses as you want. So if you want to buy every house in all of Tamriel, you can go ahead and do that. Or if you just want to own a few, you can do that of course as well. And then all houses you buy will also be shared with all your characters so it'll be account wide. Let's move on to decorating and actually customizing your house. So for me, this is the coolest part of player housing. I really didn't expect them to have this. I expected it to kind of be you just bought a house and you moved in. But you can actually decorate every single part of your house. So you can craft furniture and decorations and you can place them wherever you want in your house. It's not going to be like in Skyrim where they just went in a certain spot. You can literally move them and put them wherever you want. So think like Fallout 4. It'll work a lot like that system. But well, there's going to be over 2,000 unique decorations and furniture items. All the different race styles will be represented. And that includes tables, chairs, chests, armories, beds, bars, and counters. Even things like books, food barrels, paintings, light fixtures, plants, trees. So many things you can add to your house. And just 
so many options in general. There's even going to be working light fixtures, so you can put candles and stuff around to actually light your house. It's just crazy how much they put into this, and I really didn't expect to be able to move furniture and stuff and place it however I want, but that's exactly what this system is going to have. Now some houses are going to have outdoor areas you can decorate too, that's really awesome and something a lot of people wanted to see, so that is coming to the game. Now let's move on and talk about furniture crafting. So it's going to use the existing skill lines. If I want to make something with wood, I'm going to use the woodworking skill line. Or if I want to make furniture that's for some reason metal, that's going to use blacksmithing. And if I want to make cloth, you know, that's going to use the clothing skill line. So all the skill lines and crafting will make something for the house. Even food will make like fake food that you can put out in your house. So all of them will be represented and they all come in use. And some of them will actually require multiple skill lines. For example, the Dark Elf bed will require 4 metal working, 10 tailoring, and 6 woodworking to make. Obviously, it's going to be kind of hard because not everyone has skills worked around all those skill lines. So if you really want to craft furniture, you might want to invest in some crafting skill lines now and start working on those crafting writs, getting your skills up in order to make some stuff. But you can also buy furniture from vendors or buy them from other players, so you can't trade between uh, players to player. And you can also buy them in the crown store if you want. Now there are going to be lots of options for how you can furnish your house. You can use trophies from veteran arenas, dungeons and trials and display the monster buffs on your walls. That's a really cool feature, they already kind of have that with the wearable monster trophies. But now you can put them in your house and that's a really cool feature. There's also going to be an achievement furniture which lets you buy items after you complete an achievement associated with that item. For example, you have to unlock maybe, I don't know, an achievement for doing all the quests in a certain zone, and that will unlock a type of furniture you can then buy, so it's going to work a lot like the die system does right now. And achievements that you earned in the past will still count towards player housing. There's also going to be luxury, luxury furniture, sorry, and those will just have really, really cool stuff that's going to cost you a lot of money, so if you have a lot of cash to spend, you might want to go visit them because they'll probably have some really awesome stuff. One of the coolest parts of that player housing to me is the fact that you'll be able to keep your pets and mounts at your house. Hopefully we'll have a stable or something, but you can leave your pets to run around your house and you can keep your mounts there. And that's something that I really wanted, but I absolutely never thought that a max would put into the game. So super hyped that that's coming to the game and that's really cool. You can also put assistants at your house, crafting stations, and even practice skeletons where you can practice your build on them. Hopefully we'll also be able to hire a bard or something, I really like that in Skyrim. But it's cool that we're going to be able to fill our house with things to actually do and there's actually some useful things like your own crafting station or your own practice dummies to use. And it's really cool that housing is going to have some use and it's also not going to feel empty because you have assistants there, your mouse there, your pets there. That's really awesome that you can fill your house with things like that. Now if you completed the Mage Guild storyline, you can buy the lore books that you find around the world. Once you find a complete set of those lore books, you can go to the Mage Guild Merchant and buy them. And then you can use those books and, you know, put them in your bookshelf in your house. Things like that, I really, again, did not expect Xenomax to put in, like, the ability to fill your house with whatever books you want. That's absolutely crazy, and you can tell Xenomax put a lot of effort into this. They could have just given us regular player housing where you just buy a house and have it, but they put a lot of effort into it and really made sure it was something that the player base was really going to enjoy. Now before I end the video, I just want to mention some extra things that are coming to the player housing. First off, friends can visit your house when you invite them. Uh, you can also have any stranger visit your house even if you allow them. There's going to be an option for that. All the houses will be instance in case you didn't realize that. So you go to your house, other people are going to be around that house because you share it. But once you go inside, it's going to be your version of the house and no one else will be inside unless you invite them. Uh, houses are going to be secure so obviously no one can steal from your house. Uh, you can fast travel to your house just like any way shrine and they did mention that hopefully in the future gardening is a possibility that they're looking to put into the game. Also one last thing that you can let friends and even other people decorate your house if you want to so if your friend is really good at decorating and you're not you're gonna have them change things around your house and move the furniture around if you give them that option you have to like check a box that allows them to do that. But that is pretty much it for all the details on player housing. It's going to release in February for all platforms, PC, PS4, and Xbox One. And January is coming to the PTS for the PC, so definitely expect a lot of videos on it from me and me trying it out and showing you guys, you know, my first impressions and what I think about it so far. It will be free also, that's a huge thing. It's coming with the next major update, and it will be free for all players no matter what, if you buy the DLC or not. 
and it really seems like they went all out for this guys again i'm really excited they could have just done a simple player housing system but they really put a lot of effort into it and you can really tell because there's just so many cool features now i'm beyond excited for it and you can expect a lot more videos on player housing in the future but that's pretty much it for this video so thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around you can expect a lot more ESO videos in the future, and I'll see you in the next one.